says crafting is a dying art. I'm finding crafters all over the Middle Tennessee area who make unique items that'll be passed down for generations to come. Welcome to Handmade Tennessee. My special guest today is Brenda Reed, and Brenda does a fascinating job doing stained glass. Thank you for coming this morning, Brenda. You're welcome. You're it's welcome. so nice to have you. Thank you. You have some of the most beautiful items that I believe that I have ever seen in stained glass, and I am absolutely amazed at how you pull all this off. Well, thank sure. you. That is so cute. That little pumpkin, okay. and I can't imagine the amount of work that goes into that. Well, it's a lot. There, stained glass is a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of a gratification, lot of too. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess after you see a piece, you feel yeah. really good that you mm -hmm. did that. Yeah. That's neat. How in the world did you get interested in stained glass? Well, I've always loved stained, some form of stained glass. I used to put paper on jars and all kinds of stuff. But um, in 2003, my, my husband and I took my daughter to um, England and France. Love the old churches with the stained glass oh. windows and stuff. And I told him, I said, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do stained glass. And he just says, oh, wh whatever. <laughs> so we, we worked at A.L. Smith and uh -huh. I lost my job. Mm -hmm. So I decided to, to try stained glass and took a class to see if I wanted to take a class. Because uh -huh. you know how you think you'll want to do something. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, but anyway, I loved it, got set up. And then I went to the Appalachian Center for Crafts for oh. a little while and took classes there and have took classes off and on. That's how I kind of got started. So do you kind of take classes uh, along again sometimes? Some, sometimes I do if I find something interesting. I'm wanting to. And do, my, do the techniques change or? No, the techniques don't change, but the, the big thing that I really enjoy about doing stained glass is you're always learning. Uh -huh. There's always some secret or something that mm -hmm. makes something easier or or you, it's just a, it's just a challenge and yeah. you're always learning. Yeah. Now did it take you a whole lot to get set up with your equipment? Yeah, it, it's kind of expensive to get in, you know, to get started. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it made you nervous too after you're losing your job and you're thinking, oh, I don't want to spend all that money getting into something. Well, yeah, the biggest mm -hmm. thing with doing stained glass is the glass is so expensive too and then you, once you get your tools and you get set up, the tools last a long time. Uh -huh. But you have to end up, uh, you know, buying your glass, and then when you get your glass, you've got this box of glass, mm -hmm. and you have to go get a pattern, and you have to look at the glass and say, well, what, what can I make with that? Uh -huh. Until you get to the point where you got glass everywhere, and you can go, oh, I want to make this, and you can do whatever you want to, then it gets a lot more fun. Uh -huh. See, it would seem to me, though, that you would have to have some imagination as uh, mm -hmm. far as the colors go and, and yeah. what you could use. and I mean, you kind of have to know what you were doing. Like you right. were talking about getting uh, a lot of the black and white pieces and thinking what in the world are we mm -hmm. going to do with those. Yeah. That is absolutely adorable. Well, thank you. That is so cute. The, Perfect use of black and white. That's our best, sell, best seller that we have is our snowman. So. And y'all go to the uh, McMinnville Craft Fair every year. Yes, ma'am. Oh, mm -hmm. that's great. That's awesome. Well, what all have you got here? You see you've got a little bit of the glass. Um, and if we were going to kind of... Uh, think about doing stained glass, what would we need to pick up? Or would we just need to book a class first? Well, the, 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 you could book a class. That would be the best thing to do, to see if it's something you really want to do, because mm -hmm. it's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, that's the biggest comment I get when I teach classes is, oh my, no wonder you charge so much. Yeah. Because they'll, they'll go, are we done yet? Are we done yet? But it's, it's, it's just a big process. Uh -huh. But uh, the basic tools that you're going to need, and you can buy these in a kit, is, mm -hmm. is the burnishing tools, um, breaking pliers, running pliers mm -hmm. and then you got to have flux and uh, sorter mm -hmm. you got to have a must sorter and iron and a grinder it's mm -hmm. it's a lot of people don't have them but they're just they're nice That's, uh -huh. that finishes off your product and stuff smoother is it like mm -hmm. smooth yeah. stuff? but it, it makes it a lot easier but that's some of the basic stuff and then if you copper foil you've got to have the tape and then you got you know, like I said you got to have the flux and mm -hmm. then it's just a lot of stuff now what is flux Flux is the stuff oh. that you brush on a piece of sword, a piece of the, the copper foil here, uh -huh. and it makes a sorter stick. Otherwise, the sorter's oh. not going to stick to it. Okay, well that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I would think, yeah, if you just drop the sorter onto it, it would right. just See, fall right See, in off. order for the sorter to uh, actually stick, you've got to have the flux. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's, it's amazing. Oh, neat. Show us a couple of little pieces that you've done here. Okay, well these are our stained glass pendants that we make. Uh, these are all made, everything that you wear is made with lead-free sorter, lead-free oh. silver sorter. Uh -huh. Because that's just, you know, lead-free is the best way to go. Uh -huh. So we make these and we make the ghosts. We just got done with these for, you know, the fall, fall. Halloween season. I think Jeez. he's just sweet. And then we make oh, hearts and stuff for Valentine's, but a lot of people wear these just year round. Uh huh. And hearts. Oh, I would. Yeah, definitely. And then there's just different colored pendants we make. 
God, that those is, are beautiful. And usually in, in stock, I have over 1,200, 1,500 of these in stock at one time. Of different pendants? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind me asking, what would a piece along these lines, what would it cost someone, My roughly? husband and I, we uh, decided on $6 a piece for these. You are kidding. Um, the silver sword has tripled since we started making them, but we haven't went up in our price because it, the times are hard. But um, it doesn't matter if it's a little bitty piece or if it's a big piece, they're six bucks. Y'all know so. you're giving these away, right? <laughs> but I appreciate that. That is very But there, the, a lot of it's what's neat about them, too, is a lot of the glass is totally different mm -hmm. on the back than the front. And you can just flip them over, and it's like getting two for the price of one. Oh, that is so, so fun. That's what's six dollars. I am absolutely amazed. And I thought that was really pretty, the iridescent, mm -hmm. the shamrock. Now, these we sell for ten. Cute. But is it because of the price of uh, the glass. Well, it's it because, because it's more work. work. Okay. You know, there's four pieces and uh -huh. it's more work and yeah, mm -hmm. and stuff. So that's what, that's more expensive. Now, do your glasses? Uh, do you have more expensive glasses or does all glass run about the same? Well, no, all glass is, is differently priced. Mm -hmm. um, moderate six to eight dollars for a 12 to 12 square foot sheet. Mm -hmm. But if you go into the oranges and the reds mm -hmm. and uh, the things of uh, the yellows mm -hmm. and the golds, they have actually some gold in them. So they're more expensive. Uh -huh. Like the orange that we do the pumpkins in yeah. is pretty expensive. That is so But cute. we try to, you yeah. know, keep the price down. That's a very vibrant color, though. Yeah. You can see where mm -hmm. that would come in. Now this one, is this two pieces of glass? Mm -hmm. ah! It's a double heart. Mm -hmm. And so you've just cut them like that, mm -hmm. and then you've soldered them together. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so cute. That's our double heart. And then we have the single ones, too. Mm -hmm. But that's a lot of fun. Absolutely adorable. Lower. Now, not only do you just do small pieces, but you do large oh, yes. custom mm -hmm. pieces as well. Yes. I want to be very careful with this. That is beautiful. But these are, um, these. this is a center for some windows that we're doing in Beersheba. Mm -hmm. There's an old church that they've remodeled and we're replaced, we're doing stained glass windows for them. Mm, There's beautiful. 10 of them and they'll have five different symbols, one on either side of the, you know, double on either uh -huh. side of the church. But this wow. is one of the symbols, and we're working on that. And mm -hmm. then we do door went doors, and and what happens is is the way that a lot of this come the smaller stuff come about is when you do a big project, you got a lot of scrap, mm -hmm. so you have to figure out what to do with your scrap. I like that. So that's what recycling. That mm -hmm. I love that. And uh, now this piece right here will actually this is the centerpiece for a large for a piece. six is that foot correct? by four foot window, and then they have a transom window at the top. How mm -hmm. in the world do you? haul that. It's got to be nerve-wracking to install that. Yeah, well, we've been real fortunate to uh, use uh, Martin and Glenn Uptown's mm -hmm. helped us a lot with, mm -hmm. with hauling our uh, plate pieces because mm -hmm. they have the window transport stuff. Yeah. But so, you do, you have to be really careful. Uh -huh. and do they like put the window and then you fit this in? The they're glass is around it? or They're putting in the frames, brand uh -huh. new frames with a storm, a storm window on uh -huh. the outside, store front windows, and then our stained glass windows comes in from the inside. Oh. And that then they'll be gorgeous. framed up with um, framing around them. Uh huh. Oh, that is absolutely Thank stunning. You. Well, give us a little demonstration here of what you do. Okay. This is so much fun. I'm ready to make something. All right. Well, the first thing you have to do is pick out your pattern. I've picked something really simple. Okay. We're going to make this, make a sun catcher. Oh, call it. Or you can use them as Christmas ornaments. Uh -huh. I love them on a Christmas tree. What a great idea. Uh, but we're going to take the pattern, mm -hmm. and basically you need at least two or three copies because mm -hmm. this pattern is simple. But if you got something really unique, you want to save a pattern for later in case mm -hmm. you want to do it again. So you need one. Like maybe like the circles and, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you want to have one for later and then you to store, and then you want one to put on your, your workstation, and mm -hmm. then you want one to cut out as a pattern. All right, now where do you get your patterns? Do you well, always come up with them yourself? Well, sometimes I do, but uh -huh. a lot of times there's a lot of different pattern books that you can get, and, mm -hmm. then, and then I actually had a couple call me the other day and wanted a, a window done mm -hmm. for their home, and they actually pulled a picture off of the internet. It's a little bitty picture of a stained glass piece, and they said, can you do this half? Mm -hmm. So you just grow it and, and put it to, yeah. And take the patterns where mm -hmm. you can get them. Yeah. Great. So it's, it's usually, they'll go, can you do this? And I'm like, well, I think so. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I can. <laughs> yeah. But the first thing you got to do is cut your pattern out. All right. Okay, then you're going to take each piece mm -hmm. and you're going to put it on your stained glass, whichever side you want to do, and then you have to lay them down, mm -hmm. and then your next step is to trace them out. Okay. And you just 
we use uh, a lot of permanent markers and a lot of paint paint pens, mm -hmm. permanent paint pens. Now, what is this? A paint pen? Mm -hmm. This okay. is a Sharpie paint pen. Right. Um, these are so valuable. Uh -huh. And these are, are right easily obtainable, aren't they? Mm -hmm. These are, these are valuable. A lot of uses yeah. for these. Yes, I there love is. Them. But we use this is the pattern. Okay. And like I said, this is fairly simple. We do like, compared to that. Mm -hmm. But then you're going to have to once you get it that far. I'm not going to trace both of these okay. for time's sake. All right. So well, then we're going to set our pattern aside, and then we're going to cut this out. Okay. This is a diamond, has a diamond tip wheel in it. Mm -hmm. And what you do, basically, we say cut out stained glass, but you're really breaking it. Oh. You're scoring it and you're breaking it. Mm -hmm. And then when you do a circle, you don't, you can't, you can't, I can cut that out, but most mm -hmm. people probably, you just, you have to come on here, mm -hmm. and wherever you come, you can't stop in the middle, you got to go off. Oh. So, oh, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can't actually make no. the curve, curve, you've got to. Well. Oh. I probably can, but most people. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But basically, anything you do in stained glass, you have to start scoring, uh -huh. and then you have to go off. All right. And then you're gonna break that out. And when I say break it out, you're gonna crack that. Uh huh. So and then you've got a good start on it. Uh huh. And we'll set that aside. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna score it again. I'll try to make this in about three cuts so you can see what I'm talking about. And then these are called grocer pliers. Mm -hmm. See how they look like they got a mouth or something? Uh -huh. <laughs> but these are used. Are you saying grocer like a, a grocery mm -hmm. person? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you break that off. And then we're going to do it again and finish it. Okay, see? Sign but look how out. rough that looks and uh -huh. stuff. Well, then I have my grinder. Okay. So we're going to take the piece over here. This actually, I'll, t I'll tell you this before I turn that on. This actually has water that has inside. Okay. And usually I have a lot of eye protection and stuff. So. Okay. <laughs> I'll stand back a little yeah. bit. <laughs> okay. I didn't bring that because I knew you couldn't see. And you want to grind that and shape it up. But anyway. That one's getting older. When you get done, you can feel the smooth edges. Uh -huh. They won't cut you. Uh huh. Now, how long do you have to spend usually just until it's smooth? It doesn't seem yeah. like it's taking you very long. Mm -mm. You know, would, but but you see, know. normally I want to shape that up, make uh -huh. it pretty too. It helps shape it up. It's still already pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So then, once you get done with that, you want to clean your piece. And I usually use this stuff called Quick Clean. Mm -hmm. And then you'll spray it and you'll clean it. And then you'll wipe it with your paper towels. Mm -hmm. Which we can do. I probably need to do that. Copper foil is not going to stick. But there's a lot of uh, different secrets to this stuff. And mm -hmm. this method that we're doing today is the copper foil method. Now, my husband and I do lead cane too, mm -hmm. which is, you know, that stuff. The, the, mm -hmm. large the lead. lead. See, the panels that the windows were making for Bersheba actually have both mm -hmm. stained glass and lead can be incorporated together now this stuff is copper foil tape and it comes in different colors but we're going to go ahead with silver because we're just going to leave this piece silver okay it comes with it comes in black and it also comes in copper okay because see how i've taken this piece mm -hmm. and patented it black uh-huh then you, you can still do that if but, you use that. Well, you can, but it's okay. better if you're going to patina something to use the black back. Okay. If you're going to go black, you want to use the black. But we're going to leave ours silver. Okay. So we're going to go with silver. And the way this copper type is really sticky. And you put your clean piece on here. Oh. You kind of center it. This is an art, too. <laughs> yeah, My husband don't so. like doing this part too well. And then you just stick it on there and wrap it around. Some glass is a lot thicker, so there's different sizes of this stuff, mm -hmm. and you just have to figure out which one best suits your needs. Do you find that you prefer to work with a certain thickness of glass more often than not? It doesn't just matter to me. Fine. Mm -hmm. It's all good. I use uh, even smaller copper foil tape on a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But this is 7 30 seconds, and then once you get it on there, you want to take your this is called a fid. Mm -hmm. A what? A fid, F I D. All right. <laughs> and it's used for a lot of different things. But That'll come in handy on crossword puzzles, knowing that. Yeah. A fid. All right. <laughs> but you might, you want to uh, burnish this down like that, and then you take your fingers and kind of mash it around like that until uh -huh. it's all down. And then you take your fid, I don't know if you can see this or not, but you take your fid and mash up, pull that all up, and mash it down really good mm -hmm. like that. You have to do every piece this way. Mm -hmm. So once you get them all done, we'll set that aside. 
See, now that looks mm -hmm. like it's ready to go right yeah. now. But it's not. It's got to be mashed down, and then once you get your two pieces cut out, mm -hmm. they'll be good and burnished. Then you figure out which side you want up. Mm -hmm. See, if you feel that's textured on one side and smooth on the other. Oh, yeah. So you, I want both of, my, both of my textured sides up. So then I'm going to put it on the piece, and you'll want to pin it in so it doesn't move with some pins. All right. Okay. And then we're going to take our flux, which is what makes the sorter stick to the piece. Because if you don't mm -hmm. use flux, it won't stick. Okay. And this so, is a liquid. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and you really need ventilation too, especially with the lead, because yeah. it's it is lead sorter. Mm -hmm. So you need ventilation, but because it does smoke. But you want to put this flux all the way around this piece. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do is is get it set up where it'll stay together. Mm -hmm. And this is a sorter and iron, especially made for stained glass. But it's a, you normally, you don't want to touch this because it's over 700 degrees. Wow. Yeah. It, it <laughs> and don't pick up any sorter that's hot. But this is a sorter, it's 60-40, um, which is 60-10 and 40 lead. Mm -hmm. I like the best. Okay. And I like Canefield, which is my favorite. But and what is, uh, what's the percentage of it? Oh, you like the uh, brand, the brand. brand Canefield, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So that's 60, 10, 40 lead. Mm -hmm. Okay, now see, that's interesting. I didn't know that. It comes in 50, grades. 50 too, uh -huh. but I like 60, 40. But is it easier to work with the, the more 10? It's prettier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But you want to, I want to, I better put some flux on, more on that, I guess. But you want to flux that good. And then we're going to get this together. Boy, I'll tell you what, it's tempting not to mash that out flat. Boy, that's how you know it if you. Don't touch that 700 <laughs> degree. You will know it quick. You'll, you, you'll throw or drop or whatever quick. Or cry and mm -hmm. everything else. But you just kind of want to go down your seam. See how that melts that sorter? That is And then you so want to go around your edges. And it doesn't really seem like you have to use a lot either. Mm -mm. No, you don't. Some things you do more than others. But now that won't stick to that because it don't have the flux. Right. Is that right? Right. Excellent. But you want to be careful to get a lot of that off of there because it will break your piece. And if uh -huh. you leave your sorter and iron on there too long, it mm -hmm. will crack your piece because uh -huh. it gets too hot. But most the colors that are kind of really hard to work with are black and white because they conduct the heat. I don't know for some reason mm. a whole lot worse. Now, did you learn that the hard way, that your oh, glass yeah. will break easily? <laughs> <laughs> and you want to do both sides. Okay. I got enough on there, maybe. But everybody's different how they sort her. You just have to figure out what's best for you on these. But it just makes a pretty sorter seam. And then oh, that you, just looks like fun, too. It is. It's. I, I've taught kids as young as 12, They, but they have to be unscathed. And I found that they're not really scared of the sorter, and they're scared of the grinder. <laughs> Which, the grinder, you, you can pretty much file your nails on. But they, uh, for some reason, I guess because it makes noise or whatever, they're kind of a little leery of it. Yeah. But you just go around your piece. That is just And then beautiful. you're going to, it's going to be warm. But we're going to head, and you pick it up, and you want to go all around the edges too. Okay. So. That's basic. This is just, like I said, this is just a simple sun catcher. Simple to you. Well, and don't touch those sorter that I'm dropping because it will burn you. Mm. And have you done that before? I say uh, you have. Yeah. Ugh. A lot of people are, the biggest comment I get from a lot of people is they're afraid of the glass. Uh huh. Glass don't bother me. I stick my hands in and go right, you know, uh -huh. big, big standing up sheets of glass, and they're like, <gasps> and I'm like, <laughs> don't bother yes. me. Those little bitty shards, that just wears mm -hmm. me out, getting those little shards But this in. is your fin, that's what you end up with. And now how long will it take that uh, to dry? Oh, it's, is it, it's, it's ready now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not hot. Oh, it's, it is hot. <laughs> I'm used to it, I'm sorry. But you, you get more used to hot. But it's ready. It's done. You want to put your bead on it to hang it by, which is a little ring. And uh -huh. I'll, it's, we'll just skip that one, but because this one has one uh -huh. already. And then you want to clean it with your cleaner again. Mm -hmm. Really now, good. Did you actually sort of that to it? Yeah. Also? Okay. Yeah, you actually, well, I don't think you can probably see this, uh -huh. but you actually That's take it. And I've got a thing at home. It's called a, um, I got it for jewelry making, but it's like a little pair of alligator clips. Yeah. And I put my piece in the little alligator clips, and then I just sort of these in there. 
that it's makes a lot, it a lot easier. easier yeah. yeah, but these just kind of go in the seam. And I know she puts flux on it too. Oh so yeah, everything has to have on. flux. And then you just kind of sort them in there. You have to let hold I mean, that just a second. It's almost instant, isn't it? Yeah, just yeah, got to kind of cool. hold that a second, and then uh -huh. you want to make it look nice. Once <laughs> you hold it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But then you finish it up. And like I said, these are just just something simple. Uh -huh. And you can that really do so detailed cute. stuff. Let me set this back over here so you don't get burnt. <laughs> so I don't pick it up. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, you end up with a with a sun catcher. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't bring any of it, but they've got this stuff. This stuff here is quick clean. I did bring it. Mm -hmm. And you want to clean your product really well mm -hmm. when you get done with it. We'll clean, clean this towel. Mm -hmm. And we'll clean it. Stash hole there. We'll clean this piece really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally what we do is we've got this stuff at home called flux remover. Uh -huh. This is good for big pieces that you can't actually pick up and put in the sink because we've mm -hmm. got a huge double sink in our studio. Uh -huh. But this is good for like on the row. And then I have, I didn't bring anything, but bring it, but we have this stuff called finishing compound. Mm -hmm. And you put, you put it on there on the whole piece. And it's like a, um, reminds me of car polish. Uh -huh. And you put this on there and okay. it dries to a haze just like a, a car polish and then you have to buff it off. Uh -huh. And it's re they're really pretty. Oh gosh, I guess it just gives it that unbelievable shine. Mm -hmm. And oh, then at this neat. point, if you wanted to change the color, you know, want to patina it black, you can do black. We've that done copper beautiful. and different colors. Okay, so you so, would do uh, uh, the different, depending on if you want to patina it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, all yeah. right. But that's basically the, the, the gist of the stained glass. But like I said, it's a lot that more time so consuming than you cool. think. But, um, oh, that's neat. Now, not only do you do stained glass, you brought in this piece as well, mm -hmm. which I thought this was really a fantastic idea. Yeah, this is made with uh, what we do is, my husband calls it grandmother's old china. Uh -huh. But we there's people that you know you how you'll have your a uh, piece of st uh, old china or something that maybe meant something to maybe it's your mother's your grandmother right. great grandmother's uh -huh. and it's got a chip or a piece broke out of it and you don't want to throw it away well we we can take them and make p jewelry and stuff out of them I've made bracelets too and stuff out of them and then you can have one to give for each of your family members that this is a great neat. idea. So everybody gets a piece. You know what? And I think about some dishes that I've just begrudgingly thrown away. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that have been a great idea? Because mm -hmm. I've had them, you know, for a few generations or whatever. And then yeah. you think, well, it's broken glass. What am I going to do with it? Well, I wear this one a lot. I really oh. love it. And you wouldn't believe the comment, compliments I uh -huh. get on this. I now, just was, love that. Was this... Uh, this was actually one I got at a yard sale, I think. Somebody was laughing That's at me cool because though. I went around and was picking up all these dishes. And I mm -hmm. said, well, it's broke. Oh, no problem. And then actually some of them fell out of the car, no problem. <laughs> so I just, it actually helped you out then, I well, guess. I, actually, my husband and I thought we could just go out and buy this stuff up and just crack it. Uh -huh. It don't work that way. It, uh, we actually have a machine that's a, di a diamond belt um, uh -huh. so uh, wet, machine, wet uh -huh. sauce, yeah. and you have to cut them out. Uh -huh. So we actually pick out the piece, the, the design we want out of them and cut them out and make mm. what we want. Oh, so. That is so neat. These are so beautiful. Thank you. And uh, you do several fairs. You're going to be at the uh, Warren County Craft Fair, mm -hmm. and then uh, throughout the year you do different ones. Um, where else did you say y'all regularly go? Well, my husband's right now in, uh, um, like I said, him and I do this together, but uh -huh. he's in a, at a show in Birmingham, mm -hmm. Alabama. It's okay. called, uh, it's a Christmas festival, uh -huh. and there's like 45,000 people come through wow. this thing. And I think there's like 700 booths, but he's doing that one. He does... Um, Prater's Mill and Kittner Mill, which is in mm -hmm. um, Moulton, Alabama, and mm -hmm. I think of the other ones in Georgia. And then the Foothills Festival. Yeah, and he does Foothills in Manchester, and we're going to do the Civic Center. And he really, I try to keep telling him what, but he's going to do, he does uh, Fall Creek Falls. Uh -huh. And there they have a Christmas show, and uh -huh. he really likes that one, so he'll nice. probably do that. Well, we'll have to catch you this year, you know, mm -hmm. in each year that yeah. you go there. But that is really neat. Now, if we would like to have a piece that's custom made or uh, just inquire maybe about some gifts and stuff, mm -hmm. and we're not going to be able to get to one of the fairs, how can we get in touch with you? Well, you can call my husband's cell phone number, which is 273-931-273-6018, or you can email us at stain, S-T-A-I-N, glass B, with a little B, at bloman.net. Okay. Stain, glass B, at Ben Loman.
Belowman.net. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. not actually stained glass like it's supposed stained to be. Because I, it was too many letters and been long with it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah so that's funny. Well, thank you so very much for coming. Well, you're this welcome. is absolutely gorgeous. Well, you're welcome. I've had such a great time and I had no idea. You made it look so easy. I know it's not and it's a lot to it, but you really simplified things down for us. Thank well, you thank very you. much. Thank we you. really appreciate that. Well, appreciate and having we look me. forward to seeing you at a fair. Okay. It's going to be great fun. All right. Well, that's our show for today. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can email us at handmadetn at bltv.net or like us on Facebook at Handmade Tennessee. Thanks very much to our very special guest today, Brenda Reed. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm Kimberly Vance, and I hope that you've been inspired to create your own Handmade Tennessee. If you enjoyed today's show, check us out on Facebook for other shows and information at www.facebook.com slash Handmade Tennessee. You can also email us your comments or suggestions to handmadetn at bltv.net.